Oh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's good to be with you again. And um, it's also good to be part of this series we're in at the moment on the spiritual disciplines of, of the Christian faith. This morning's discipline is contentment. How to be content with what you have and seek first the kingdom of God. Seek God first in our lives and not always be wanting and worrying about everything. Seek ye first. When my children were young, we used to play hide and seek quite a lot. You've played that game, I'm sure, many times. It's great fun. The children run off and hide and one of the children have to come and find them. But one of my children thought it was quite funny occasionally not to go looking for them and to leave them hidden where they were and for him to go off and pursue other things like football in the garden or watching the TV. And you can imagine uh, the rumpus that happened about half an hour to three quarters of an hour later when all the children came out of their little cubby holes from under the bed or from inside the wardrobe, very angry <laughs> at what had happened and rushed straight to mum to tell. I laugh about it now, but really it was quite painful at times. And I tell you this because I think sometimes we treat God like that. Um, he's not hiding, but he is waiting to be found. And sometimes we go off in other directions in pursuit of other things like football, maybe, or watching the television. Or perhaps we pursue money and finance and bigger cars and bigger houses and, and better holidays and and prettier clothes and more and more of this and that and the other and leave God in the shadows, so to speak, waiting to be found. In the passage before us this morning, it comes from this Sermon on the Mount where Jesus teaches about the fundamentals of the Christian faith and about life in all its fullness and how we can find joy in all these things. And it springs out of uh, John chapter, um, Matthew chapter 6, uh, verses 19 to 24, actually, where Jesus speaks about uh, um, storing up treasures in heaven rather than on earth. You know that passage just before this one? Jesus says, look above rather than below. Look up rather than down. Keep your focus on God where your treasure lies, so there will your heart be. And having taught on that particular subject, Jesus comes to this one and says, therefore, I tell you, don't worry about these things. Therefore, meaning after all that I've told you about so far in my sermon here, don't worry about everything. Keep a clear head and focus on God. You know, when Jesus tells us not to worry, it doesn't mean that we're not to be concerned about the things that go on in our lives. Of course, we need to be concerned if we have a pain in our body in some way. We need to be concerned about that and go and find out what it's about. But concernment is uh, being concerned is very much a, a doing word, isn't it? It's a positive word. It makes you get up and do something. Whereas worry is a different word altogether. And it really means hopelessness. We, we get bogged down with the word worry and with worry itself. And it sort of staples us to the ground and, and doesn't let us move very quickly. Being, uh, being concerned is important, of course, in so many ways. And we are, aren't we? We're concerned, but we, we mustn't be worried about it. Now, I don't want you to worry about this. <laughs> if you are a worrier, I don't want you to worry that you worry all the time because, well, Jesus never tells us not to do something without telling us how not to do it. And I'm coming to that in a moment. But, you know, it's quite a natural thing for human beings to worry, um, obviously to be concerned, but to worry too is natural. Um, it started with Adam uh, in the garden uh, where he was sort of hiding from God, if you like. Um, and he says this, um, he answered God, I heard you in the garden, O Lord, and I was afraid 
because I was naked. I was afraid, I was worried, I was concerned, I was anxious because I was naked. You know, as human beings, we're, we're naked, if, if you like. We're, we're sort of vulnerable. We need protection. And we're open to all sorts of uh, things that can come against us. Adam was frightened and our worry, our worrying is part of the fall of human beings. That's what we're like, I'm afraid. And that's why Jesus speaks about it so powerfully and says, look, don't worry. God is in control. All is well. I sometimes think, there must be a merit in me, in worry. You know, um, nervous stomach is a good stomach. The nervous stomach is a happy stomach. <laughs> you know, things like that. Worry is good for you. But we do it so much, don't we? We do worry a lot, don't we? Um, but worry is not good for you at all. No, it's, it brings ulcers. It brings heart disease. It brings blood pressure. It brings headaches and sleepless nights. Worry, well, there's no merit in it at all. Not really, not at all. No merit in worry. Um, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things will be added unto you. All these things will be sorted out for you. Trust in God. Well, how do we seek God's kingdom? That's what we need to know. How do we seek it? And how do we find it? But I want to say this. Firstly, open your eyes and look around you. In verse 26 of chapter 6, we find this. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. Like what you will eat or drink or your body, what you will wear, is not life more than food and body more than clothes. Look around you. Look at the birds of the air. Look at the flowers of the field. You know, nature has an ability to teach us about God, to help us put our worries into a perspective, so to speak. You know, we live on a planet that weighs... <laughs> Well, it's very heavy. It apparently weighs six septillion, 588 sextillion tons. That's a heavy, heavy ball. Yet it hangs in space unsuspended. And it hurtles through space at a thousand, a thousand miles a minute. But no one falls off. <laughs> now I say it like that because I wanted to try and find a way of saying this simply. This is incredible. God's wonders in the universe are amazing, spectacular, are fantastic. And we can't fathom it, the depth of it, the breadth of it. What did you wake up worrying about this morning? <laughs> Our planet hangs unsuspended and flies through the universe, yet no one gets harmed by that. It's all part of God's mighty scheme. Isn't it wonderful? What did we wake up worrying about this morning? Lift your eyes unto the hills. Where does our help come from? It comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The good thing about the lockdown, I feel, has been the way people have discovered nature much more deeply. A friend of mine said only recently, I heard the bird song this morning for the first time ever in my garden. And the bees buzzing around our lilac bush are amazing. There's so many of them. And the butterflies in our garden, not just the white ones, but the colorful winged ones. It's wonderful to see. God is good and we need to have eyes to see it. If you want to find the kingdom of God, look around you. Stand on the shoreline and wonder at the waves. See the colours in the butterfly's wings. Hold a newborn baby in your hands and ask, 
Where did this come from? Where did this come from? They say there is no God. For those who have eyes to see, God is all around us. God surrounds us. And one of the reasons I believe is that I cannot deny the extravagant generosity of God in nature. It's wonderful. How great thou art. How great thou art. God loves us and cares for us and wants us to have the very best in life. He knows what we need and he will provide it. You know, when my youngest son was about 15, he came downstairs and he said to me, Dad, can I have £10, please? And I said, mm, yeah, it's OK. Um, my wallet's on the bedside table upstairs. Go and get it. And he didn't go upstairs. He walked straight to the front door. And I said, no, no, the money's upstairs. He said, no, Dad. He said, I already taken it. <laughs> I knew you'd say yes. Now, I'm not sure. <laughs> how valuable that is in bringing up children. But the point I'm making is that God knows what we want. God knows that we need. I love my son. He loves his children. He wants to give us all that we need. My son needed money to go out with that day. And I was only too willing to let him have it. But the point is he knew, he knew that I would give it to him. We need to have that type of faith in God, our Father. He loves us and he cares for us. Open your eyes. Look around. Worship him in the beauty of holiness. Psalm 100 and verse 1. Shout for joy. Shout for joy. All the world. Shout for joy to the Lord. All the earth. Stand on the hillside. Stand on the wayside and worship the Lord. It's not only about singing in church. This is about life in all its fullness. God is all around us, surrounding us with his wonders and his beauties. God's kingdom is near. If only we have eyes to see it. But it's not enough just to say that God's kingdom is found in nature. Of course it is, absolutely, and perfectly and wonderfully. But it's also important to say this. Secondly, open your heart and look within you. Open your eyes and look around you, but also open your heart and look within you. You know, God's kingdom is not like earthly kingdoms. Um, with the geographical boundaries and uh, restricted areas and borders. God's kingdom is the work of God's Holy Spirit in the lives and hearts of his people, enhanced and evidenced in what people are doing through his spirit. It's God's righteousness inside us, with us, establishing us, and working through us for the benefit of the whole community. It's building God's kingdom in us and through us. It's a wonderful thing. It's not self-righteousness. It's not that I have righteousness of myself. Of course I don't. I'm far from righteous. But when I accepted Christ into my life, he came in with his righteousness and he gave me his righteousness. So I have the righteousness of Christ living in me. I'm not perfect. That doesn't make me perfect. I don't want to be self-righteous about this. But God working through me is a powerful thing. And it can bring his kingdom to bear in the lives of myself and my family. It's like inviting Messiah to reside within me. It's like asking the Savior to come and live with me. It's like asking God himself to enter into my life and be with me. It's the most wonderful thing. And another thing, um, another reason why I, um, I believe in all this is because I cannot deny the extravagant generosity of God in my own life. 
how he did enter into my heart, how he did do those things I just spoke about, how he did encourage me and help me and, 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 and lead me and brought me to the place where I am now and how he guides me still and how he carries me at times and how he forgives me and loves me and lets me have all that he knows I need to have in this life, to have a good life without worrying about everything all the time. It's a wonderful thing uh, to be a Christian. When we accept Christ, we receive his Christ, his righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Look into your hearts. Open your eyes and look into your hearts. Look around you. Worship. Look within you and worship God. It's one of the reasons why I love to worship. Yes, to sing and to praise is nothing like it. Uh, but to also to stand on the downs and look out over the sea and worship there as well in the beauty of holiness, so to speak. God is good. God is good and we have all the power we need inside us to be all that we need to be, not to be worried people, not to have that type of non-existent faith that the pagans have. And they dismiss God from the situation. We have God with us in the situation, in every situation. And I would want to say this, perhaps as a response to this message uh, this morning, it might be good if you look into your hearts and thank God uh, for what you have in Christ, what he's given you, what he's done for you and what he's doing for you. And if you've never accepted Christ, in your life, then I want to encourage you, perhaps this week, to think about these things more deeply. Perhaps to talk to somebody about it. Perhaps to pray with someone. Prayer is so important. We pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Worship you, Lord. Worship you. Thy kingdom come. We ask for God's kingdom to come. Why don't you do that? Why don't you ask for God's kingdom to come? It's a mighty thing. It's a wonderful thing. It's a big thing. But he will give it to you and it will sustain you and it will help you and it will carry you and it will save you from the depths of despair that sometimes we get in when we worry all the time. You know, if I was to take myself off to the end of Brighton Pier and not being able to swim very well, I fell in and was struggling in the waves and the water. And then someone came up alongside me swimming and swimming and said, hello, I can't swim very much either, but I thought you might like some company. <laughs> that wouldn't do me much good would it i need one of those australian surfing guys you know with the big muscles and the legs i need them to get me and carry me and lift me and, and swim me back to shore and place me um on solid ground <laughs> that's what we have in christ we don't just have a friend we do have a friend, but it's more than a friend. We don't have just someone who thinks we might like some company on the life's, on life's road. We have a powerful, powerful God, a resurrected son of God. Do you believe? Will you invite him in this week and find out for yourself what I'm saying is the truth? God is good. And he responds when we ask him to come into our hearts and we find him. He's not left in the shadows. We then find him for ourselves. Yes. And for others. Why don't we make that a response to open our eyes to the things around us and worship and to open our hearts to the things inside us and worship. Worship his holiness. Prayer is essential. Thy kingdom come, that thy will might be done. Well, hide and seek, it's a great game. It's great fun. But God is not hiding. He's waiting. He's waiting for you and for me to find him. Open your eyes and look around. Worship him 
in all the things of life, in all the things that surround you. And open your heart, look within you, worship him again for all that he's done for you and for all that he can do for you. And never forget the last line in this passage, that all things will be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things that we worry about will be added to us. He will give it to us. We will have it. All is well.